Play my damn music. Better bounce back and get the cheddar cheese. Yes, sir. We did it. A perfect 4-0 yesterday. We did get the sweep covering with UCF, Manhattan, Notre Dame, and Boston College to give us the 4-0 sweep. That's back-to-back -back days. I'm giving out 40 bucks. Drum roll, please. Let's figure out who the winner is. And our winner is Brandon Cook, 9213. You're always giving us the good vibes. I'm happy that you were selected as the winner. Be sure to leave your cash app in the pinned comment down below. I'll have a pinned comment. Make sure you put your cash app in that comment. That reminds me, yesterday's winner, Jazzy or Jazz Ogby, uh, I did not get your cash app. So I'm going to give you one more day. Please also put it in the comment, in the pinned comment down below. All right. I'm paying both of you guys 40 bucks. Because that's what I do. That's what I promised. We went 4-0 today. Let's keep things going with a continued sweep, hopefully, today. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. Today is Wednesday, March 13th. And what we like to do is to try to give out 40 bucks, just like we have the last two days. If you'd like to qualify, all you need to do is, number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, comment below. 4-0, give us the good vibes. Or you can put O and 4 if you want to be a negative person and give us those bad vibes, number three, like the video. And if and when we sweep one way or the other, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks again. Hopefully we can do it for three days in a row. Let's keep things rolling. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's plays. This game's on a neutral site in Brooklyn, New York. On the year, St. Joe's 19 and 12 on the year. They are nine and nine in conference, five and five in their last 10. Meanwhile, George Mason, 20 and 11 on the year. They are also 9 and 9 in conference, and they are also 5 and 5 in their last 10. These two teams have only played once this year. It was at St. Joe's. They won by two. Looking at the top players, starting with St. Joe's, they are led by Eric Reynolds, the second. He's a really good scoring guard, averages 16.8 points per game. Next on the team is Xavier Brown, averages 13.2, leads them in steals. And they got three other guys that scored between 10 and 11 with Rashir Fleming, Lynn Greer III, and Cameron Brown. For George Mason, this team is led by Keyshawn Hall, averages 17.1 per game, also leads them in rebounds at 8.3. Next is Darius Maddox, averages 14.1, and leading them, the, the third guy, is Amari Kelly at 12.1. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and take St. Joe's in a pick em situation. Okay, looking at ATS trends, St. Joe's on the year, 16 and 15, only 6 and 12 against the spread in conference in their last 10, 4 and 6. George Mason, on the other hand, 17, 12 and 1 against the spread. They've covered their last two, 6 and 4 in their last 10. So ATS wise, George Mason slightly better, but over the last five, St. Joe's is 3 and 2, George Mason 2 and 3. So nothing too significant from an ATS standpoint. When these two teams played earlier, uh, George Mason did cover as St. Joe's was four and a half point favorites. And as I mentioned, they only won by two. The big thing I'm kind of going off here, I've seen both of these teams play. I like St. Joseph's in general as a better team. I like that. I believe they have the best player in this game in Reynolds. Looking at some other key stats here, points per game, St. Joe's averages 76.7. That's five more than George Mason, who only averages 71.1. Also, I found it pretty interesting about the assists per game. I kind of had a feeling about George Mason's assists, but now it really shows as far as their stats. This team only averages 11.6 assists per game, ranking them 280th in the country. They give up 14 assists per game, and St. Joe's averages 14.6. So what does this kind of tell us? It tells us that George Mason overly helps. Uh, they're able to beat teams that rely on one-on-one -on -one scoring, but St. Joe's does not do that. Okay, This is a team that makes the extra pass. As I mentioned, 75th in the country in assists per game at over 14 a game. And so going against a defense that's really going to be, you know, forcing you to pass the ball, overplaying the gaps, overhelping, uh, it's going to allow for some easy shots for St. Joe's. The other thing is three-point shooting. St. Joe's almost 36% on the season at 35.9, and George Mason, 34.6. Not a huge discrepancy, but we'll take the advantage for a team that shoots it better at three, 
going against a team that I think helps too much on defense, and they're going to get hurt. So we're going to take St. Joe's in a pick em situation as our first play of the day. Moving on to our second play now, we're looking at Rice versus Wichita State. Wichita State currently favored by three. This is at a neutral site in Fort Worth, Texas. On the season, Rice is 11 and 20 on the year, 5 and 13 in conference, 1 and 4 in their last five, 3 and 7 in their last 10. Meanwhile, Wichita State, 13 and 18 on the year. They are 4 and 6 in their last 10. They have the same conference record at 5 and 13. Most recently, uh, Rice was at home against North Texas. They lost 55 to 71. Uh, Wichita State, on the other hand, was on the road against Tulane, and they also lost by 10, 75 to 85. These two teams played not very long ago, March 2nd. Um, this game was at Wichita State, and Wichita State smacked them pretty good, 87 to 66, winning by 21 points. Looking at the top players, starting with Rice, they are led by Travis Evey, averaging 16.4. Their only other double-digit guy is Makai Mason, averaging 13.7. Meanwhile, for Wichita State, they got three guys in double figures, led by Kobe Rogers, averaging 16.4. Xavier Bell averages 11.5. And Harold Beverly, 10.8, leads them in assists and steals as well. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and take Wichita State, currently favored by three points. Looking at some ATS trends, neither of these teams are very good against the spread. Rice, 13 and 17 and 1 on the year. Uh, they're 2 and 3 in their last 5, 4, 5, and 1 in their last 10. Meanwhile, Wichita State, 11, 18, and 1 on the year, 3 and 2 in their last 5, a little better, and 5 and 5 in their last 10, a little better there in that regard as well. I've mentioned this before. Wichita State has battled with some of the top teams in this conference. Um most recently, as far as a notable win, I mean, let's at home against Rice, they beat Rice by 21. Not very long ago, as I said. But before that, they were on the road against UAB, definitely underdogs in that game, and they beat them straight up by eight points. Very impressive win. Earlier in the year, they were on the road against Memphis, only lost by two. On the road against South Florida, lost by four. Florida Atlantic on the road, only losing by nine. And also, they played Florida Atlantic at home, lost to them in overtime. So this team has potential. I think they've been playing better as the season has gone on. Um, and so I do like them here in this situation, only having to cover three points against a Rice team who's really shown us nothing on the year. Looking at some other key stats here, offensive rebound percentage, Wichita State, 28.8% compared to only 25.9% for Rice. They're very, they're pretty much the same as far as effective field goal percentage. Rice has a small advantage. However, the real uh, significant number is going to be opponent effective field goal percentage. Wichita State holds their opponents to 48.4. Rice only 52.4. We got a 4% differential there. These teams both shoot it almost identical from the three point line, right around 32%. However, another difference is going to be what they hold their opponents to. Rice gives up 37.5% from three to their opponents. Meanwhile, Wichita State, 32.4. So I think uh, Rice struggles defensively in general. Um, Wichita State does a lot better job defending the three, and they only need to win this game by three points here. Neutral site. They just smacked Rice by a ton earlier. We're going to take, uh, as I mentioned, give us Wichita State here, minus three, as our second play of the day. Moving on to our third play now, we're looking at Rutgers versus Maryland. Maryland currently favored by three and a half. This game's in Minneapolis, neutral site. Rutgers 15 and 16 on the year, seven and 13 in conference, only one and four in their last five, four and six in their last 10. Meanwhile, Maryland 15 and 16 on the year, have the same conference record at seven and 13. Very similar, lost their last three, one and four in their last five, but even worse, two and eight in their last 10. Most recently, Rutgers was at home against Ohio State, lost that game by 22, certainly disappointing. Uh, Maryland, on the other hand, they've lost also three in a row, most recently on the road to Penn State, lost that game by 16. So both of these teams are struggling. During the uh, regular season, they split the series one and one. Uh, Rutgers 
lost at home to them by 17, but won on the road by three points. For Rutgers, this team is led by Jeremiah Williams. Remember that name. I'm going to bring him here, bring him up here again shortly. He averages 12.6 points per game, also leads them in assists. Uh, second on the team, they got two guys averaging double figures right around 10. Clifford Omarie, he's their big man inside. Good shot blocker, almost three a game. 10.6 also leads them in rebounds. And then Andre Hyatt averages 10.4. For Maryland, they're led by Jameer Young, 20.7 points per game, four assists per game. And Julian Reese is second on the team, 13.9, second, or actually leads them in rebounds at 9.7. Third leading scorer is Dante Scott at almost 12 a game. Okay. Our play here is going to be to go ahead and take Rutgers, plus three and a half in this situation. ATS trends, Rutgers is 13 and 18 on the year. One and four in their last five against the spread, three and seven in their last 10. Maryland, 12 and 19 on the year, eight and 12 in conference. They're also three and seven in their last 10. So, as you can tell by now, these teams have a lot of similarities. However, looking at some other stats before I get into uh, the meat of what I want to talk about here, um, Maryland does lead in the majority of, of offensive categories. Okay. They have a slightly better effective field goal percentage. They also have a better opponent effective field goal percentage as far as what they give up. The few things that Rutgers does do a better job of, they don't turn the ball over as much, slightly lower percentage in that regard. They have a better block percentage. I mentioned their big man inside, almost three a game. He is a difference maker as far as, you know, defending the rim. And they shoot it slightly better from three. But to be honest, neither of these teams shoot it very well or score much in general. The big reason that we're taking Rutgers here is due to some injuries and due to a rising player for Rutgers. Looking at Maryland, they could potentially be without their second leading scorer, Julian Reese, who's dealing with an ankle injury. He has scored 20 points in, in, and had six rebounds in their win over Rutgers on February 25th. Rutgers, on the other hand, has won five out of their eight games in February, including a win over Maryland during that time. And in large part, that was due to Jeremiah Williams, okay? He was ineligible for most of the season, but he was clear to play on February 1st, and uh, he's really probably their best player at this point. I think he's a huge difference maker. He's finally starting to really get in his groove. You got one team that's kind of going up as far as the addition of Jeremiah Williams, and when you look at Maryland, they're kind of dropping down as far as losing Julian Reese. So, we are going to go ahead and take the points here. Give us Rutgers plus three and a half um, on a neutral court versus Maryland. All right, moving on to our fourth and final play now. We're looking at Oklahoma versus TCU. TCU favored by two in this game. On the year, Oklahoma 20 and 11. They're eight and 10 in conference, four and six in their last 10. Meanwhile, TCU is 20 and 11 also. 9-9 nine nine in conference, and also 4-6 and six in their last 10. Most recently, Oklahoma was on the road against Texas, lost by 14. Most recently for TCU, they were home versus Central Florida, lost that game by 2. Certainly disappointing. These two teams have only played one time this year. Uh, the game was at TCU, and Oklahoma lost by 9 points, 80-71. When looking at Oklahoma, they are led by Javion McMullum, averages 13.3 points per game. Second on the team is Otega Owe, averages 11.2, and Jalen Moore is not far behind him, averages 11 in game, 6.6 .6 rebounds. For this TCU team, they're led by Emmanuel Miller. He's a good scoring kind of combo forward, averages almost 16 a game, leads them in rebounds at 5.8. Next, they got three guys that average uh, – between 9 and 11, we'll talk about here. Uh, Jameer Nelson Jr. averages 11.3. Micah Peavy, 11.1. And Trey Tennyson averages 9 a game, 2.3 rebounds. Also, I want to note about Oklahoma, Rivaldo Soares, he would be, I guess, their uh, third leading scorer, averages 9.3, 4.9 rebounds. Remember that name as I dig into this one. We are going to go ahead and take TCU here. This is a good situation due to the fact of some injuries here for Oklahoma. I mentioned Soares. He is dealing with 
Uh, he had a problem in his last game. Uh, it looks like an ankle injury. He aggravated his ankle in the last game to Texas in their loss. And he he averaged 17.6 points, four rebounds, and 1.3 assists per game over Oklahoma's last three games. That's super significant. And if he is playing, I don't expect him to be fully healthy. The other guy that Oklahoma has not had for a while now is John Hughley, who averaged 8.4 points per game. He's been out since early February, but that's also a very significant loss. Looking at some key offensive stats, um, you know, these teams have a very similar effective field goal percentage. They're very similar in very many categories. Oklahoma is a bit better defensively. However, TCU has a 5% advantage when it comes to offensive rebound percentage, um, forcing turnovers. TCU does a good job of that. And when TCU forced turnovers, this team is out and they really push the ball. They average 73.7 possessions per game. Oklahoma only 70 possessions per game. And the last thing we'll talk about here is three-point percentage. TCU shoots at two percentage points better, 36.4 compared to 34.4. So both of these teams have been struggling lately, but I think TCU is the better team. You add in the fact that Oklahoma is dealing with an injury to you know, one of their most important players, especially somebody that's been playing very well as of lately. Um, so we're going to take TCU here. Give us TCU minus two as our fourth and final play of the day. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for the 40 bucks, which we've given out now in back-to-back -back days, all you need to do, number one, subscribe. Number two, comment below 4 and 0 or 0 and 4. And number three, like the video. If you do all of that, you will qualify. Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookie 4-0 and oh yesterday. Let's continue. Let's go for another sweep today.